right. Good morning. going to be in the book of Genesis this morning. This will be easy to find. Genesis chapter number six, page number 13, if you have an old Schofield Bible. Genesis chapter number six. Don't forget, uh, come back if you can tonight. Be with us in the evening service, six o'clock. We're studying uh, the book of John, I'm trying to do a chapter each week. Uh, the portraits of Christ. Each of the 21 chapters of John paint a different picture of Christ. And so we've been looking at those. Uh, so come back and be with us. And then uh, next week is Mother's Day. So hopefully uh, you'll get to be with us uh, next week and we'll honor our moms. We used to do, uh, you know, youngest mother, oldest mother, mother with the most children, but <clears throat> That got to be repetitive. It's just the same people over and over again. So, uh, you know, I like to honor all the mothers. So uh, <clears throat> that's what we do now. We honor all the moms. And uh, so you come and be with us, and uh, we'll have uh, something special for you, maybe a, you know, a Walmart gift card. You can go to, go to Walmart and if you dare. <laughs> Amen. Everybody loves Walmart, right? <clears throat> so that'll be next week. And then uh, in the month of June, on uh, the fourth Sunday in June, that'll be homecoming. And uh, we plan to have homecoming this year uh, and fellowship together and eat a meal together and uh, just have a good time. So <clears throat> keep that in mind. Write that down in your book. Uh, oh, wow. Memorial Day is coming up at the end of this month. Hard to believe we're already in May. Uh, uh, but that'll be coming up, so keep that in mind as well. <clears throat> and uh, welcome this morning. And those of you on the front row, uh, thank you for tuning in. And again, we saved you a seat right here on the front row. Genesis chapter number 6 uh, and verse number 1. And it came to pass, when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he is also flesh, yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bear children unto them, the same became mighty men, which were of old men of renown. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart were only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created, from the face of the earth, both man and beast and creeping thing, and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Let's pray. Father, thank you, Lord, for your blessings today. Thank you for all that you have done for us, and uh, God, uh, for this place of worship. Uh, I pray, Lord, that you might have your way in the service, may we say those things and only those things that would bring honor and praise and glory unto you. I pray for the lost that you speak to their heart right now. Lord, reach out to them uh, either here or through uh, the front row. Uh, may you reach folk that are lost and may they come to a knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Lift up those that are discouraged today. Most of all, touch the sick, God, uh, and help them uh, in a mighty way. And Jesus' name, and for his sake we pray these things. Amen. Amen. Verse number eight, after God listed all of these things in Genesis that were going on in the earth, and I don't have time to cover them all today, all of it is quite interesting uh, without a doubt. Amen. Uh, but it gives you a picture in the first seven verses of what was going on. The sons of God, it said, came under the daughters of men and took wives of all which they chose. And 
Uh, you know, you say, well, who are these sons of God? Uh, well, there's two uh, main theories, and I, like I said, I don't have time to develop that, but uh, the two main theories are that uh, the sons of God were the godly line of the descendants of Seth, and that the daughters of men were the ungodly line of the descendants of Cain. Uh, and then there's another thought uh, uh, that is mainstream as well that, uh, that uh, says these sons of God were actually fallen angels. And that these fallen angels took uh, uh, the daughters of men, and this is where uh, the giants came from. Uh, and if that whets your appetite, maybe we'll do a study on that sometime. Uh, it's an interesting uh, study. I do have uh, an opinion uh, on which this is. I, in fact, I used to uh, uh, subscribe to one line of thinking, and after I studied that and really put some time into it, I kind of moved over uh, uh, to the other to the other way. Uh, but it's just a matter of interpretation. It, it, uh, my wife and I were talking about this yesterday. It doesn't uh, have anything to do with salvation. Uh, but it does have uh, impact on the earth and, and the things going on. But uh, the Bible said the result of all this was that, uh, uh, that man's uh, heart uh, was wicked. He saw that wickedness of man was great. Uh, uh, and so it's great. Every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Uh, and uh, repented the Lord that he had made man. Amen. Uh, and, and so uh, uh, he said, I'm going to destroy man. But then we find in the midst of all of this, uh, Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And you know the story, the story of the flood. Amen. And Noah and his family uh, ate uh, uh, in that uh, family that resided in the ark under God's command. Uh, and they stayed in the ark. Uh, God shut the door. And after the flood uh, waters had receded, uh, they landed on uh, Mount Ararat. Uh, God uh, let them come out and they repopulated uh, the earth. Can you imagine the earth population uh, uh, in this instance is reduced uh, to eight people, eight people on the face of the earth. Uh, and listen, uh, uh, there's some other things that we'll get into maybe when we study the, the sons of God and the daughters of men and the giants. Uh, uh, you know, we think we're something technologically today. Uh, we think we've really done some things, uh, and I guess in one sense we have, uh, but I don't believe we're the only ones who ever have. I believe that in Noah's time, during these times, there were things happening that might surprise us and cause us to scratch our head uh, and wonder how did they do that. But let me move on. I, I want to talk about this morning uh, the man Noah. Uh, the Bible said Noah uh, walked with God. Not only that, uh, uh, that he found grace in the eyes of the Lord, uh, but it's another person uh, that the Bible said Noah walked with God. Uh, and he is like uh, Enoch, in that sense, the Bible said Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. Now, uh, there are many traditions about the flood across the world. H.S. Uh, Bellamy, in the book Moons and Myth and Men, estimates, uh, uh, if you can believe this, that there are over 500 flood legends in the world. And you probably heard some of them. Babylon uh, had their flood legends. There's the uh, there's the story, the epic of Gilgamesh, uh, and all of that. Uh, and there's been flood legends in Vietnam. There's been flood legends uh, uh, in Africa, all across the world. There's a a, a, a different version. Uh, you know, they had it in China, uh, Babylonia, Wales. Uh, Russia, Hawaii, Scandinavia, Sumatra, Peru, Polynesia, all of these places have their own different version of a great flood. Now, it would stand to reason that if all these uh, civilizations, all these uh, uh, cultures have a different flood uh, uh, story, that somebody would stand up and, and take notice and say, well, maybe this really happened because uh, it, it's kind of hard to spread that across the world unless there's something to back it up. Amen. 
But today, all we hear in the mainstream uh, is that, oh, the flood never occurred. Noah, if he ever lived, didn't do any of those things, and probably Noah didn't live, and, and you know, it was just all uh, something that somebody made up and all that. I don't have time to get into that uh, because uh, there's many flood legends, but there's only one flood truth. Amen. Amen. There's only one flood truth, and this is the one that we look at today, uh, and the man who is at the heart of the truth. Uh, and I'm going to give you a few thoughts on this uh, uh, this morning. First of all, uh, Noah found something. Amen? Noah found something. Verse 8, Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Now, get a picture, of you, if you will, of the land he's living in. The Bible said there were giants of the earth. Uh, there was all kinds of marriage and intermarriage. Uh, there were all kinds of false worship. The Bible said men's thoughts were evil continually, uh, that they weren't thinking about doing good. They weren't trying to do good. They had given up on that concept, and now they were only thinking about doing evil things, uh, things that would satisfy uh, themselves. Uh, fulfill the lust of the flesh. They were thinking about those things. Uh, and God said, basically, uh, uh, if I don't do this, uh, nothing's going to be withheld from them. Amen. Uh, and uh, uh, that speaks back again to their technology, uh, but don't have time to get into that. But, uh, but listen, uh, uh, Noah's living in this day, uh, and Noah is a man of God. The Bible said Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. He said, now what does that mean? Well, uh, the word grace there means graciousness or kindness or favor. In other words, God looked upon him with kindness. He looked upon him with favor. He was gracious unto him. Uh, the Bible said Noah was a just man. The word means lawful or righteous. In other words, Noah was living uh, in the middle of sin city, uh, and yet he was a righteous man. Now, it ought to tell us today, uh, as we are increasingly living uh, in a world of sin and debauchery, uh, uh, and it seems like that every corner you turn, uh, uh, there is violence and wickedness, uh, uh, and it uh, permeates uh, uh, everything, the workplace, the home place, uh, uh, the TV screen, you know, uh, 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 think of how far we've come, or I should say how far down we have gone uh, uh, in just a few years uh, uh, in TV and the movie industry, you know. I mean, some things now uh, that you see that are taken for granted uh, 20 years ago would never have been allowed on TV because it was too violent uh, 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 and uh, it was too obscene, uh, but now it's increasing more and more and more. I get calls periodically from, uh, you know, the, uh, the people that, you know, I get my TV through. And uh, I won't call the name since this is going out over the, uh, over the web. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, technology is always listening. Hello, Siri. Hello, Google. And the rest of you, uh, you know, out there. Uh, but anyway, they call me periodically and they'll say, look, uh, uh, you've been a good customer for a while and we'd like to upgrade you. Uh, uh, and we want to give you HBO and we want to give you Cinemax and we want to give you na 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 na. Uh, and I say, well, I don't have money for that. And they'll say, well, this is not going to cost you anything. It's free. And I'll say, well, guess what? I still don't want it. And the last person that I talked to, she was like, really, this is free. You get free HBO and free Cinemax and free this and free that. And I'm like, listen, uh, uh, you may give it to me for free, but once it comes into my house, uh, uh, if it gets into my head, I can't ever get rid of it. And that's not free. I said, uh, you know, and uh, we kind of got into a discussion. She said, you don't like HBO and you don't like Cinemax? I said, I, I'd be truthful. I hadn't really ever watched much of it, uh, none of it uh, in my house, uh, but maybe being at somebody else's house. And I said, all I ever saw on that uh, was filth and garbage. And I said, there's enough uh, garbage on the regular channels, you know. And she said, wow, you're a strange bird. I said, well, I may be. I may be. 
But, you know, I do have some imagination. I don't need you to show me, uh, you know, uh, what's going on behind closed doors uh, in full living color. You know, I'm, you know, I can still think through that and, and uh, we can get beyond that. You don't need to show me all the, uh, the gory details, you know. Uh, uh, anyway, uh, uh, Noah was living in the midst of all this, but yet he was a righteous man. He was perfect in his generations, the Bible said. Uh, that word means uh, uh, integrity or truth, uh, uh, entire in his being, integrity. Amen. You know, I had somebody ask me one time, uh, you know, uh, it's when uh, I was sitting before the uh, uh, the police department and, uh, you know, for a job interview and uh, they were, uh, you have to go through all the psych tests and all that kind of stuff and then you make it to the board and there's about a dozen uh, police officers and, and shrinks and all these kind of people in there uh, and they're asking you all these questions and they had read a statement that I had written and I used that word integrity uh, and uh, uh, one of them asked me, she said, well, what does that mean? And I was tempted to fire back and say, well, if you don't know what that means, you don't need to be where you're at. But I didn't. I bit my tongue because I knew that would have cost me, you know. Uh, but, you know, the answer is, uh, you know, integrity uh, is uh, doing the right thing when nobody's looking. That's my definition. Now, you, you won't get that out of Webster, I don't think. But that's my definition is doing the right thing even when nobody's looking. Amen. Noah was perfect in his generations. Uh, and, and there's more there. That's, there's a hidden statement there. Perfect in his generations. Amen. There's something to be said here about the this corruption of the seed of man. And this goes back to the sons of God and the giants and all that. Not only was man being corrupted in his ways, in his actions, uh, in his deeds, uh, man was being corrupted in his DNA, I believe. Man was being corrupted at the very uh, uh, molecular level, uh, and God said, I've got to stop this. Uh, uh, and, and so uh, uh, that's why he uh, cho uh, chose Noah. Noah was uh, perfect in his generation. In other words, uncorrupted. He had not intermarried with these uh, other people. There was none of that DNA in his line, uh, and God said we can carry on with him. Now, Noah found something. This was no accident. Amen. This was no accident. Noah was taught by men. Uh, now, get this. This was, uh, you know, 4,000 B.C. Uh, Noah had been taught by men whose lives stretched all the way back to Adam. You say, really? How's that? Well, uh, I'm glad you asked, because if you look at Noah's family chart, and I won't go through all of it, but there's Adam and Eve, and then uh, if you branch out from Adam and Eve, there's uh, Cain uh, and his descendants over here. Uh, there's Abel in the midst. Uh, Abel was killed, so he had no descendant. And then there's uh, 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 Seth over here, uh, and that's where Noah's line come from. Uh, now listen to this. Uh, you, you go from Noah... Uh, and it goes back to Lamech, his father, uh, and it goes back from there to Methuselah, who was uh, his father, and then Enoch, who walked with God and he was not, for God took him. Uh, and then there's Jared uh, and Mahalel and Kenan and Enos and Seth, and then you're at Adam. You say, well, that's a long way. Yes, but listen, these people lived a long time. Methuselah lived 969 years. Amen. Do you know that Seth only had died, Seth, this is the son of Adam, had only died 14 years prior to the birth of Noah. Seth. You say, what are you saying? I'm saying that the knowledge that these men had in them, they carried with them, and they taught their children, and they taught their children's children, uh, and it carried on down. Uh, and so we see at the end of this line, uh, as far as where we're at, uh, we see Noah, and Noah was a righteous man. This wasn't just happenstance, or it wasn't chance. You say, well, what are you saying? I'm saying that if we teach our children, uh, the Bible said, uh, if we raise them up in the way of the Lord, that when they are old, they will not depart from it. Amen. Amen. So it's important to teach our children about the Lord. <laughs> if you get your children, and we got some sitting here today used to come here when they were children. 
Why are they here today? Because they were taught as children. And they came when they were children, and they never forgot that. Uh, am I right, brother? Uh, Red Stover and Brother Grover, and you remember those? Amen. Uh, and, uh, you know, we got some others. Uh, uh, I guess when I started coming here, I was, what, 13 or, or so? Uh, and so uh, a child myself, uh, listen, uh, beloved, it's been uh, uh, a, a matter of teaching about the Lord. Uh, and so Noah, this was not a happenstance. Uh, Methuselah, uh, the word means when he is dead, it shall come. Methuselah died in the same year the flood happened. Amen. Lamech, who was Noah's dad, was 182 years old when he begat Noah, and he died at 777 years of age. Methuselah, he was 187 when he begat Lamech, and he died at 969 years of age. Enoch, the Bible said, his name means initiated, by the way, Enoch was 65 years old when he begot Methuselah. And interestingly enough, if you study these men out, you'll find that none of them had children uh, early on in their 20s and 30s. Enoch was probably the youngest at 65, meaning that guys in those days, uh, uh, they didn't start having children probably until they were in their 50s or 60s, uh, meaning that likely, uh, uh, you know, maturity happened slower in that time. Uh, and so these guys were having children when they were 187. Noah, by the way, he had uh, Shem, Ham, and Japheth when he was past 500. Amen. He was over 500 years old. He had three sons. Uh, the Bible lists them Shem, Ham, and Japheth, but uh, the, the proper order is uh, Japheth, Shem, and Ham. And I'll get to that in a minute. But let me move on. Noah found something. He found uh, the grace in the eyes of the Lord. Noah received something. You say, what did he receive? Well, uh, uh, he received uh, this. Uh, listen, Psalm 127, verse 3 said, uh, Lo, children are an heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. As arrows are in the hand of a mighty man, so are children of the youth. Happy is the man that hath his quiver full of them. Amen. Happy is the man that hath his quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but they shall speak with the enemies at the gate. Enemies, or, or not enemies, children are one of the greatest blessings that God can give you. And if you've got children, you've got a great blessing from the Lord. Amen. And in fact, uh, uh, the Bible said, happy is the man that hath his quiver full of them. Well, I've got, uh, you know, uh, daughters and, and I've got grandchildren I got some that are not physically my blood, but I claim them like children, you know. I, and uh, and so I got a whole house full. But boy, I tell you, I, I'm behind the time when it comes to. Uh, I got a nephew, and uh, and they're getting ready to have another child, and I think this will make what five. I mean, uh, uh, I, I'm telling you, I, I was like, be like, boy, you're trying to populate the whole mountains up there. Uh, you know, every time I turn around, uh, uh, she's having a child. But, but I'm glad for them. Amen. They, they're young and they're healthy and their their children are beautiful. And they're they're good parents and and uh, and I say, if you can do it, go for it. Amen. I can't afford to feed that many children. Baseball hey, team. <laughs> that's right. It's your own baseball team, your own bowling league, or, you know, whatever. Uh, get the chores done, you know. Amen. So Noah received something, the blessings of the Lord. Uh, and listen to this. Uh, the Bible said Noah was 500 years old, uh, and he had three sons, uh, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And I, I told you the, uh, the proper order would be Japheth, uh, 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 Shem, and Ham. Amen. Uh, 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 you say, well, why is that? Well, uh, some people have asked the question because it mentions them in the same verse. Uh, and they ask the question, it may have occurred to you, were Shem, Ham, and Japheth triplets? And the answer is no. Genesis 9.24 said, when Noah awoke from his wine and found out what his youngest son had done to him, that is Ham. So Ham was the youngest. So there's got to be a timeline there. Genesis 10, 21 said Shem, whose older brother was Japheth. So Japheth was the oldest. Shem was the middle. Ham was the youngest. 
So they weren't triplets. Uh, I used to wonder about that until I kind of studied it out. Uh, and so Noah received a blessing from the Lord. Now, he didn't know what a blessing uh, it was going to be because through uh, Shem and Ham and Japheth, the population of the world was going to be refreshed. Thirdly, Noah heard something. He heard something. You say, well, what do you mean? Well, uh, let me set the stage for you here before I tell you what he heard. The earth was changing. The population of the world was changing. Genesis 6, 11 said the earth was corrupt before God and earth, uh, the earth was filled with violence. Now we are in a violent age. The Bible, Peter said uh, that in the last days, perilous or dangerous times shall come. And we're living in those now. Now we don't have giants around that I know of. Uh, but think about that. You know, some people wonder uh, how some of the great edifices of old were built. Uh, you know, the uh, you, you ever gone and looked at the H blocks uh, uh, on one of the mountains? Uh, you know, uh, and stuff like that. And they wonder how how uh, in, in uh, this distant land, five thousand feet up on a mountain, uh, you find these perfectly carved that would have to. If we did it today, they'd have to be done with a laser. They're so perfect. They look like an H. And they're huge, and they weigh tons, and they're up 5,000 feet on top of a mountain. And somebody said, how'd they get them up there? Slave labor, whatever. Well, you ever thought about giants being in the land? Somebody had to set those stones. Hey, man, it might take something for me and you, Andrew, to move stuff like that around. Uh, uh, but if, you, uh, if you'll dig around, and I don't want to run out on a limb here, but there's some evidence to, uh, 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 to put forth uh, that some things uh, about this nation and other nations have been covered up considering mankind. And that being uh, giants, you know, science doesn't want you to believe they ever existed. But there have been actual mounds uncovered with uh, the bones of giants and such. And I don't have time to get into that either, but we'll, uh, we'll get into that someday. Uh, uh, but think about it. A man who, uh, you know, was 15 foot tall. Uh, you think about Goliath. He was, what, uh, you know, 12, 13 foot tall. Uh, and according to uh, some records I have looked at, uh, there were men who were probably uh, in the range of 20 foot tall that lived in the past. You say, well, that's crazy. Well, well think about it. Uh, what a man like that could do, the strength that he might have. You know, I know you're looking at me like i got two heads. I, I promise you I haven't gone out on a limb. I, I have, uh, you know, I, I like information. I like to search things out. And some of these questions have been on my mind for a, a long time. Amen. I wonder, you know, why did that happen? How did that happen? Not that I don't believe God's uh, word is true. I know every word of it is true. I believe the word of God. And even if I can't find the answer, I still believe God's word is true. Noah heard something. The earth was changing the population, the lifespan. What did God say? My spirit shall always strive with man, for he is also flesh, yet his day shall be 120 years. Now, up until then, we told you, uh, 969 years. Noah was 950 years when he died. I mean, these people were living a long, long, long time. You know, uh, 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 I haven't even reached a retirement age yet, and sometimes I, I think that's a long time, particularly when, uh, you know, the weather changes and, and I'm creaking along <laughs> like I'm 400 years old, you know. Uh, uh, and my knees hurt and my hips hurt and all that kind of stuff. And I'm like, wow. Uh, and then again, I'll turn around and think about it. And Cindy and I were looking at stuff yesterday. Uh, and I was like, wow, that, that seems like it happened yesterday. And it's been 20, 30, 40 years ago. Amen. Uh, but think about living 900 years. <laughs> wow. 900 years. Well, you say uh, it'll never happen. Well, will in the millennium. People live a thousand years, and by that, uh, by the same token, we as children of the Lord, uh, we won't have any age anymore. Amen. So the lifespan was changing. God reduced the lifespan to 120 years. Why is that? You ever think about why that happened? Uh, you know, well, uh, uh, the environment, I think, counts for part of it. Rain happened for the first time. 
They'd never seen rain. The Bible said in that day, water came up out of the ground and watered the earth. Uh, and now uh, uh, there was dew that fell every night, watered the earth. They'd never seen a drop of rain. Uh, can you imagine, uh, uh, Noah, what are you doing? I'm building an ark. Why are you building an ark? Because God told me to. Why did he tell you to? Because it's going to rain. Rain? What is rain? Well, God said water is going to fall from the heavens. And they probably laughed and scoffed and kicked dirt and, and walked away because Noah wasn't near the ocean. He was out in the middle of nowhere. Building what, of all things? An ocean-going vessel. Yeah. Noah's crazy. He's lost it. Let's go out and look at old man Noah. He's building a, a, a sea-going vessel up there on the hill. And he says uh, animals are going to come and get in and he's going to get in there with his family and, and they're going to survive. And guess what? He's invited us too. Can you just hear it? Can you hear it? Amen. Uh, and guess what? Nobody got in the ark with Noah save his family and the animals. Nobody believed him. Because they were so comfortable in their life and their technology and the things that were going, the things that they were doing. We survived the things. We'll survive this. Uh, there's uh, no such thing as rain. Kind of like people who say there's no such thing as the rapture. There's no such thing as Jesus dying on the cross. There's no such thing as Jesus rising from the dead. There's no such thing as the tribulation uh, or, or judgment or any of that stuff. All of that's a fairy tale. It's all made up. Well, guess what? Just stay tuned. Just stay tuned. Rain for the first time. The environment was changing. Lifespans are shortened. Get this. Today, water covers, what, two-thirds of the surface of the earth. Somebody said all that rain that fell from the heavens, uh, and it wasn't just from the heavens. The Bible said the fountains of the deep broke up. Scientists do, this, do the research, go and look it up, and you'll find uh, scientists say there is more water in the core of the earth than there is on the surface. Now think about that. Here it is. Noah's finished the ark. God said, get in the ark. And God shut the door. And then it didn't start immediately to rain. Some people have a picture of Noah getting in, hurrying the animals along, and rain is sprinkling. No. He was in the ark days before the first drop fell. But the fountains of the deep began to break up, meaning uh, we're talking geysers and volcanoes, and we're talking... Uh, uh, I believe tectonic plates shifting. Maybe there may have been a pole shift, uh, you know, uh, and threw things upside down uh, and things started moving and all this water came rushing out from the earth and then water came falling from the heavens uh, and where did it all go after it was over with? Well, it's still here because now two-thirds of the earth's surface is covered by what? Water. Amen. Some people have theories that there was an atmospheric change. You know, theories range from water vapor canopy that surrounded the earth when God separated the waters, the firmament, that there was a great uh, cloud of water, and that's what watered the earth, uh, 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 that, uh, you know, uh, that provided uh, two things, a hyperbaric oxygen chamber, so to speak. In other words, air pressure here would have been different because of that water vapor cloud uh, and it would have caused greater oxygen concentration on the earth. Uh, hence, uh, people breathing a greater concentration of oxygen would have had better health and would have, what, lived longer. And once that was gone, what happened? Lifespan goes down. Also, that water vapor canopy would have protected men from solar radiation, which shortens your lifespan. You know, we used to like to get out in the sun and tan and get all the tan and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but doctors will tell you that's bad for you. You know, uh, I remember uh, years ago, we, uh, my wife and I and some friends of ours were going to uh, the, the beach. Uh, and it's back when I think it's Carolina, the boardwalk and all that kind of stuff. We'd go down there and get in the water and play putt-putt and you know, eat uh, uh, corn on the cob on the boardwalk and all that kind of stuff. Well, we had a chance to go earlier than our uh, friends, uh, and they were, you know, we went down on Saturday uh, and got the rooms, uh, and, and they were not able to come because he had to work. They came down on Wednesday. So we were there from Saturday to Saturday, supposed to be. They came down on Wednesday. Uh, well, guess what? By the time they came on Wednesday, uh, 
we were both burnt up, <laughs> you know, from being outside, you know. And, uh, you know, I remember, you know, having a T-shirt on, and it was one of those, like a tank top T-shirt. Uh, and I've been outside in the sun and playing putt-putt and all that kind of stuff. And I actually had uh, blisters on my back where, uh, uh, you know, the sun had got me. Uh, uh, and uh, so... Uh, uh, they were all excited about getting there. I remember him rolling up and, you know, getting out of the car and calling my name. And, and uh, he was a special kind of character anyway. But uh, uh, anyway, uh, he was ready to go, you know. Uh, let's go get in the water. Uh, he called me Charlie. He said, hey, Charlie, uh, let's go get in the water, you know. And I'm like, look, Charlie can't hardly walk. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, the sunshine, amen, we'll, we'll do it to you. Amen. Uh, and then, let me hurry so I can get done here. Noah, I told you Noah heard something, but I gave you the picture of what was happening. What did he hear? Verse 13, Genesis 6, Noah, and God said to Noah, the end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. He heard the voice of the Lord. Amen. We need to hear God's voice. You say, we're living in violent times, preacher. We are, but you know what? We need to hear the voice of the Lord. Right here it is. And then Noah built something. You say, what did he build? Well, he built an ark. Genesis 6, 14. God said, make thee an ark of gopher wood. Uh, cypress wood is what that is. Room shalt thou make in the ark, and shalt pitch it within and without. Now get this. Noah was 120 years in making this ark. 120 years. We complain sometimes about, you know, oh, I've been at this church for 20 years and it hadn't grown any. Well, guess what? Noah preached 120 years building the ark and he had eight members. That's all he had. He got in, God shut the door, and the rest of them went to hell. That's right. They were invited, but they wouldn't get in. So we don't have any right to complain if we see two or three because uh, we got more than Noah did. Amen. Noah preached while he built. 2 Peter 2, 5 said uh, Noah was a preacher of righteousness. This ark, by the way, you probably already figured this out, is a type of Christ. Amen. Foolishness to the world. The Bible said, 1 Corinthians 1, 18, the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us who are saved is the power of God. We're here today, and people think we're fools. That's right. Going to church sometime on Sunday morning, I sit at the stoplight, and I catch people every once in a while looking like, what is that? Well, he's dressed up in a suit and tie and all that. He must be going to church. Oh, bless his heart. You know, you know what I'm talking about? That's right. We, we are all, we, we're, we are not the cream of the crop anymore. Uh, there was a time when people, uh, you know, even the lost people would go to church. But now uh, it's hard to find those folks. And, and you say, what do we do? I'm just saying, stay in the ark, amen. Foolishness to the world. He used God's blueprint. You know why? Because Christ is the only way. Listen to this, John 10, 1. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. And we know there'll be no thieves and robbers in heaven. And guess what? The animals. You say, how do all them animals get in there? You got elephants and giraffes and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And somebody said, well... How would you get all that many? I mean, the ark was big. If you calculate it out, how many cubits it was, the ark was 450 foot long. Now, that uh, that's pretty big. I, I mean, we went on a cruise one time. The cruise ship was 600 foot long, and it was the latest and greatest. Uh, there's a battleship, uh, you know, that I uh, heard about, uh, and it's only 600 feet long. So Noah was online in keeping with today's standards, uh, uh, and he was building something that was comparable uh, to uh, the size of a battleship or a cruise ship. And the Bible says Noah used God's blueprint. How do you get all those animals in there? Somebody said, well, maybe God's miniaturized them, shrunk them up and all that. No. You ever think about this? Uh, 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 maybe God didn't bring the adults. 
He sent the babies. You know? Not, not mama giraffe and daddy giraffe. Their life's pretty much spent. But baby giraffe, get on up there with Noah. He'll take care of you. You take up less space and, uh, and not uh, mama rhino and, and daddy rhino, but baby rhino. You know, God used the babies, takes up less space, right? Uh, and, and so he put all those in the ark. Uh, the Bible said he, uh, he brought them in uh, uh, for the unclean. Uh, they came in two by two. And somebody said, oh, there's a contradiction in the Bible. It said by sevens. Well, yes, by sevens for the clean animals. Why would God send them by sevens? Because uh, Noah needed some animals for sacrifice. If he hadn't had animals to sacrifice, if he had only two of those clean animals to sacrifice, uh, then he wouldn't have had any left to repopulate. So God knew what he was doing. Amen. And, and so Noah built something. He built the ark, and God sent them in. Noah didn't have time to go out on an expedition. He didn't have time to say, okay, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, y'all go out and find these animals and bring them in. 